A reading from the beginning of the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles who he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He answered, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him go into heaven. The word of the Lord. The second reading is a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not enter into a sanctuary made by hands a copy of the true one, but heaven itself, that he might now appear before God on our behalf, not that he might offer himself repeatedly, as the high priest enters each year into the sanctuary with blood that is not his own. If that were so, he would have had to suffer repeatedly from the foundation of the world. But now, once for all, he has appeared at the end of the ages to take away sin by his sacrifice, just as it is anointed that men and women die once, and after this, the judgment, so also Christ offered once to take away sin, the sins of many, will appear a second time not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since through the blood of Jesus, we have confidence of entrance into the sanctuary by the new and the living way he opened for us through the veil that is his flesh and since we have a great priest over the house of God let us approach with a sincere heart and an absolute trust with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed pure in water let us hold unwaveringly to our confession that gives us hope. For he who has made the promise is trustworthy. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the conclusion of the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city 
until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, raised his hands, and blessed them. As he blessed them, he parted from them and was taken up to heaven. They did him homage and then returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple praising God. The Gospel of the Lord. If you're listening closely, you probably heard something that sounded a little odd at the start of this gospel passage. In fact, it was before the gospel passage. You'd normally hear at Mass a reading from, a reading from, a reading from, and you get used to hearing it. There are a few points where it differs from the norm, where we normally say a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Instead, it says a reading from the conclusion of the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The Ascension is where all of the Gospels basically stop. Each of the Gospels pretty much stops with the Ascension. Why? Because the Gospel is the Gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the good news that Jesus Christ brought in his day, in his time, and when he ascends into heaven, that ends the time of the gospel. The gospel has been revealed. However, if you are paying close attention, and this throws people off a little bit, our first reading today began the Acts of the Apostles. The first reading begins the Acts of the Apostles and takes up where the gospel reading left off. So this seems a little bit backwards. We had a gospel reading, which is our third reading in the Mass, which is followed up by where the first reading was. If you're not confused, I'll try harder next time. <laughs> but the Acts of the Apostles begins where the gospel ended. And the Acts of the Apostles is the beginning of the church and its mission. Our mission. Our mission began when Jesus ascended into heaven. And it began with the apostles stopping and just spending time in prayer. It didn't begin with them first going out and proclaiming the gospel. We're going to get there fairly quickly. That's next week. It began with them just taking in what has happened. They stopped and they spent time in prayer. It says in the end of this, this is the last line of Luke's gospel. They did him homage and then returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple praising God. This is where the proclamation of the gospel begins for each one of us. To stop and give God homage. Another word for homage is honor. Another word for homage is praise. Another word for homage is worship. To stop and give him worship. To acknowledge all that God is and all that God has done in your life is where the proclamation of the gospel begins. Stop for a minute. In this past week, think about what God has done for you. Just take a moment, and in this past week, what is something you've been blessed with? Did you even take a moment up until this point in the week to really stop and realize, if there's a blessing in my life, it comes from God? Stop and really think for a moment. This week, not, not in my whole life, maybe you can come up with a long list your whole life, but just in this past week, what is something I have been blessed with? Have I stopped and given God thanks for that? To praise Him for it. Now look in this past week and think of your worst sin. In this past week, we've all sinned. 
No, I'm not telling you mine. <laughs> We've all sinned in this past week. Think of your worst sin of this past week. Have you stopped to say to God you're sorry? Have you stopped to just simply acknowledge, Lord, I was wrong? I know a lot of people like to say I don't say it very often, but I admit I am wrong all the time. But it's important for us to just stop and have that moment and say, I know I was wrong. I know I was wrong in what I said. I know I was wrong in what I didn't say. I know I was wrong in what I did. I know I was wrong in what I didn't do. That's what we're doing at the start of every Mass with that I confess. Sometimes we ramble through it so quickly we don't really stop to think about it. Take that moment and then realize this week God's love has been greater than that sin. God's love for you has been greater than that sin. He loves you. And let your heart fill with joy. We're going into the celebration of Pentecost, the end of the Easter season. And I'd highly encourage you throughout this week to make each day leading into Pentecost a day that at the end of each day and the beginning of each day, you look back on the past day and say, where did God bless me? Lord, thank you. And at the end of each day, and the beginning of each day, look back on that past day and look, where did I sin the worst? And say, Lord, I'm sorry. Help me realize that your love is greater than my sin. If we really let that sink in, it will make the Feast of Pentecost all the greater with joy. We celebrate today the ascension, Christ leaving us. Why? Because he said, I have given you all that you need. Rest in that for a moment, and I will be back with the power that you need to proclaim to all the nations. As the apostles spent time reflecting on all that Jesus Christ had done, this week may we reflect on all he is doing in our lives, that we may celebrate next week's Feast of Pentecost with even greater joy.